The 71 GT is back, this time with a broken exhaust system. Now we do have a number of little jobs to do on this thing while it's in here. But first, we're going to start with that exhaust system. So this is the exhaust system that actually was on that car when we put the used motor in it. And it was all rust out right here. All rust right here. And I had another system sitting here that was a lot less rusty there and looked like it would be a lot less likely to break. And ironically, it broke right there at that joint initially. So the reason that exhaust system actually broke where it did was because right after we worked on this thing, or soon after, he broke a check strap. Now the reason why that's important is this limits the axle movement up and down, keeping you, first of all, from overextending the shock absorbers, which of course these are not stock, but also keeping the exhaust, the exhaust from being hit by the rear axle and when i set that up we set it up tight to the rear axle like you're supposed to so that you don't catch the exhaust on things and you need that for ground clearance and then then because of lack of ground clearance because this thing does need rear springs are sagging a little bit and he's a big boy like six foot four he must have caught the resonator on a speed bump or something and then he ripped it off right there so that's why it's getting a complete exhaust system put on it so since he loves his car and has no plans of getting rid of it anytime soon we opted to do a stainless steel system here so this is the taurus trophy from moss it comes with the whole front the front pipe mid pipe without a resonator and then a rear pipe and muffler. And it comes with gaskets, hardware, and all new hangers, modern style rubber hangers. I've installed a number of these over the years and actually recommended that this would be a good one for him to use, giving him the tone that he would be happy with. So this system comes with three exhaust hanger brackets. Now, the reason why it comes with three is because this system fits chrome bumper cars and rubber bumper cars with the twin carb conversion. So you would use this one in the rear of a rubber bumper car, this one on a chrome bumper car, because then that sets the exhaust lower so that you clear the exhaust housing, or the exhaust housing, the rear end housing. <laughs> Then you use this one in the middle. It's got two sets of holes. The bottom set of holes for the chrome bumper car. Top for the rubber bumper car so that it sits lower to clear the rear housing. So one of the little minor issues you can have with these is you see how this bracket's made. And with production tolerances and stuff, see how this is, the ends of this is so close to those bolts that you really can't get a wrench or a ratchet on there once you get it up in there and you're final tightening it. So I like to go in there with a grinder and just nip the corners of these to give me some room for a socket. All right, so now I got room to actually get a socket in there and work on this. All right, so now I got that one installed in the back and up here in the middle. So then we can start by hanging the front pipe. All right, so I didn't film actually putting this in place because it's almost impossible to get the camera up in there and actually see what we're doing. But, you know, you got, it comes with gaskets and for it, but it does not come with new nuts. So it's a good idea to buy all new brass nuts to put on there when you buy the system. But you get it on there where it just barely moves a little bit, not fully tightened up there just yet. And then we'll hang the second section. Okay. So like I said, this comes with the uh, rubber hangers. It's a good idea to spray some sort of lubricant in there. You can use WD-40, silicone, any kind of whatever you have on hand. 
don't fumble it like I did. And then walk it on there. It's a little tight. I noticed there's always slight variances in these things from like year to year. Like they've actually had more than one contractor make these over the years. And you'll see some slight variances in just how long this hangs down. And the longer it hangs down, the harder that is to get on. And the okay. This one. Well, one thing I have noticed over the years at times, sometimes these don't line up as well as they should right at the, uh, at the uh, flanges. And that's uh, because it is stainless. Stainless pulls an awful lot while you're welding it. Depending on how well they tack these things, before they weld it and how good the jig is holding it has a makes a big difference in how these things stay in position and i have had to cut and weld some of these before to make it work and i like to get the full system in place and look at the look at this and make sure we're not gonna have a big gap and it's not going to push things way off to tighten it at this point, I don't usually get too worried about actually getting the gasket in there or even worrying about the lock washers or anything because I'm just test fitting to make sure all of this actually fits the way it's supposed to. And once again, we locate the hangers and the rubber donut. Sorry, this is going to be a little out of the picture because this one's hard to run. Try to do this on my body. Got it on a workbench. Makes it a little harder. They made this thing so long, it's really hard to get it on there. All right. All right, so now we're gonna put this up here. Try to get this. Again, set a few bolts in here. Let's see how everything looks. I've had some of these things bolt right up with no issues. I've had some of them where I've looked at them and just went, there's no way that that's gonna sit anywhere where we need it to sit once you tighten the flanges down. That's why I test fit all of them first. So after snugging all these up a little bit, it looks like everything's gonna fit the way it's actually supposed to. I do notice they have changed these things. I think they've upped the quality, probably because of some issues in the past with them not fitting as well as they should. So now I can go ahead and loosen these back up, put the gaskets in, put the lock washers on and actually tighten everything down. And then you'll notice as you're starting to put this together, it looks like there's a bit of a gap at the very top here, but that's actually not a problem because as you tighten it, you can see it's right now it's against the cross number. So as you tighten it, it actually, that's now at the angle it wants to be at, 
so it's not touching the crossover. That's why we don't completely tighten it up at the manifold yet. You get everything lined up, tighten down as you go, and then go back and finish tightening it up at the manifold. Make sure everything is sitting just like you want it. Because if you tighten it at the manifold first, you could actually have this thing angled like a little bit, because it can move a little bit at the manifold. You can end up with it angled in a direction that doesn't work, and then you think the rest of the system is way off. Now, in the case of this particular system, I actually was not at all happy with this joint. Because as you were tightening it down, it was pulling. It had a big gap on top again, just like the one there. But it was enough. It wasn't quite closing up all the way. And it was pulling this down from here. And I would like to keep it up higher, especially since, you know, he's not a small guy. And with the weight, you know, we don't want to drag this thing, but it was kind of putting a lot of tension on the uh, hanger there and getting it further away from here. So I went ahead and actually cut it right through here and let that tip a little bit and then re-weld it myself. I have had to do that to a few systems and that's part of working with stainless. The stuff moves around so much when you're welding it initially that if it's not a really super great you know jig that really holds those things they can pull and get off a little bit but now we need to go on up front here tighten these bolts here and then we gotta start the car up get the system hot get it through a heat cycle and come back and re-tighten everything again especially these if you don't go back and re-tighten these after it's been hot they will come loose all right so now i've uh started the car up warmed up the system a little bit re-tightened all of these nuts here and everything going all the way back so this is how the system fits in the car actually fits pretty nice Looks pretty nice. The uh, um, fit and finish is pretty good here. And they even have this nice little blacker on the side there if you like that. The nice polished finish. A nice little tip. So I know everyone's going to want to know what does this exhaust sound like? Now these things. I've noticed over the years some variations in how they sound, but they're nice and mellow, but not usually too loud. Go ahead and give it a couple revs.